Good morning, everybody, or wherever it is in your world. Hello to you. Uh, so Andy will be right back with us in just a moment, but while he is running an errand for me, I will tell you guys what we're going to be working on today. So I actually... Um, will be completing my purse that I kind of showed you guys the front panel of when we did that pillow a couple weeks ago. Um, it was my prototype to make sure that the spirally guy would work out. And um, I really liked my example. So I decided to do something with this little tenant circle that I made. So we will be making um, like a rope bag is, is the idea here. Um, just like a purse rope bag. So we've already obviously got this front panel going. Um, if you are curious about doing this design, you can go check out our couple of videos on the True Saint pillow um, that we did a few weeks back. Um, the pattern is downloadable there. Um, there's two different sizes. There's one for a big one like this beautiful pillow, which is still here. I'm sure all of you are very surprised that it's still here. Um, and then there's also this sized one uh, for a smaller project. So what we've got is 10 inch circles. Um, I just cut these out with the 10 inch clicker die that we have here, um, which made it nice and easy for me. For those of you that don't have a 10 inch clicker die at home, use your wing dividers and cut a circle and you'll figure it'll, it'll be great. It's going to be great. Um, this leather is a leather that I'm sure they will post in the description. It is something that you can buy. Um, it is a pebble grain finish split is what it is. Um, but it's got this really awesome coating on the back of it. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty neat. Thanks, Andy. How'd that go? Oh, perfect. I love it. It'll work. <laughs> Alrighty. So, um, everybody, Andy, you, you guys know this fella? He's going to be here to keep me company today while I work. The one that's and, so talkative. And provide all the banter for everybody. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> In any case, Dean, guess what, buddy? I know you're here. I, I need you to ask your question. I need you to. I need you to ask the question that you always ask to make. It'll make my day. It's going to make my day. Um, a rope bag, Little Fear, is a bag that people who do rodeo stuff put their ropes in. Um, and this is just a really tiny version. Usually they're quite large. Usually they're maybe, I don't know, like a 15-inch circle. Have you ever made a rope bag? No, Same? but I think Denise is. Yeah, they're they're large. So it's usually a, a big bag that you'll roll up your rope and rope and you'll put it in there. Um, so, but basically it's just a round bag with a gusset. Uh, so that's what we're doing today. We will be doing outside seams. We're going to be edge painting everything, which typically um, Denny is not, he does not edge paint. That is not a Denny thing. Um, Clayton would do it every once in a while. And so we are going to be using our Fenici, um edge system and we will be edge painting this I have today and then Wednesday and then possibly Friday of next week to get this bag done. We'll see how far we get every day and we're just going to work on it while we go. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Anything else? Would a woman use this? I, I, I would use it for a purse if I needed a new purse. I think it's a ten inch circle is, I think, is a good size. Um, I have already put a pocket on the back side, so this is my front panel, and then um, I just put a little internal pocket here. We will also be doing a pocket on the back side as well. Um, I recently got a purse. Actually, it's right here. So this is this is my purse that I got here recently, and it's got this really awesome pocket that just my cell phone slips right in on the back of it, and has been super handy. And so I feel like every purse. Hi, Luz. Every purse that I have from now on is going to have this pocket on the back of it uh, because let's face it, nobody wants to get in and out of the zipper every time we want to get our cell phones out of our bag. And Dean, you have not asked your question yet, and so I feel like you're just ignoring me. But guess what, guys? This bag has a zipper, and we will be putting it in on camera to make Dean happy. That's my whole goal for today. Bill on Facebook asks, how was the last step? Alaska was phenomenal. It's just like every picture, it's just every movie that you've ever seen is Alaska. That's what, well, that's all the parts that we saw, which we just tootled along the coast. We hit Sitka and Ketchikan and Juneau were the three stops that we made. We did whale watching. Um, I do have some pictures, but since Tony's not here, 
these guys, I wasn't going to force them to attempt to figure out how to do a slideshow uh, of pictures for you. So next week when Tony is back, um, we'll do a little slideshow of pictures for everybody. It was awesome. All righty. You want to start edge painting? Sure. Awesome. Your banter is going well so far. <laughs> so... This is our little back pocket for the pocket. What we did, um, cause at first I just cut, this is a 10 inch circle and I just cut an eight inch circle and I was just going to roll the top over. However, that didn't because the, it didn't work. So I, I recut my circle and did a three quarter of an inch, um, seam allowance around here for the the outer edge. So this will just be, we're going to edge coat this pocket and then this pocket will be sewn down flat to the back. Um, so those will be, it goes like that. Those will be your two panels for the front and the back of the bag. The gusset is going to be this leather. This is our willow, willow floral something or other on the website. I'm pretty sure if you just type in willow on the website, it will pull up because we don't have anything else called willow, I, I imagine. Um, so 10 inch circles, this is a three quarter inch seam allowance around this pocket. Um, and then I just did kind of visually a third and two thirds because that's how things like to work. And then if you would put your cell phone in it, it should go in that way or you could do it vertically either way. So that's what we're doing. And then for the zipper, I have done a 12 inch long um, zipper hole here. I have rolled these edges. So what we did is I just cut found the center of my strip. This is a two and a half inch wide gusset. Um, so I found the center and I cut 11 and a half inch long um, slot. And then I cut two little triangle slots down to my 12 inches here so that I could roll the zipper gusset. So that edge will be nice and rolled. Um, we got some basting tape there on the back ready to go on the zipper. And then we will be lining also the zipper gusset with um, the split back of, of this. So I've split this piece of leather in half, got my back side off, and that's what I'm going to use to line the zipper gusset. We will be installing the zipper between the two layers. There will be two zippers so that you can open it from either side or from both sides, however you want to do it. Um, and then we will be doing a French seam on the outside of the gusset. But then on the inside, I'm just going to take this blue layer and I'm going to overlap them. We'll roll one edge and then we'll overlap it over a bottom. And that way I don't have a seam in the middle on the inside of the bag because I don't really like that. So. Chiffin color. <clears throat> Um, little fear, if you will send an email to, does laser just have an email, Chad, or is it uh, just, sure. you can do like custom stamp at sprinkledleather.com numbers. Okay. So little fear, if you want to email custom stamp at sprinkledleather.com, that is the department that does all of our acrylic. If you will let them know which one you're looking at, they can tell you whether or not it would be something that we would be able to cut out of acrylic. So... That can be something that you do. All right. And then also, if anybody does zippers, basically what we're doing here is just a zipper that will pull apart from the middle. It's very nice. And all you have to do is if you have just, this is just regular nylon zipper tape. I'm using the narrow version here. This is the regular size. And then you're just going to, you're going to install your pulls one from each end and then they want to face each other so that as you open it, they open. And as you close it, they close and this goes back and forth. So really simple there. You just put them on facing each other from the end and then you'll have two zipper pulls. Um, Chad, is it custom stamps or custom stamp? Uh, just custom stamp. Singular, little fear, singular. Yeah, Dean, I did a I did a fancy zipper just for you. It's not even just a regular zipper. It's got two pulls. I 
Where's our background music? Me? Yeah, D-Box. No. Is that is that one of your skills? <laughs> no. No? I'm not. <laughs> that was such a delayed reaction. I mean, this is live. So I, was, I was trying to come up with a witty, witty reaction. <laughs> uh, so once again, we've got... I'm just going to keep giving you guys specs here because that's all that my brain can handle while I also attempt to construct things. So two and a half inch wide gusset. Honestly, if you're making one of these, you can make it as long as you want. Um or as wide as you want. Two and a half inches seemed plenty. Um, we'll do a quarter inch seam that will roll up um, to the, the outside, so it'll end up being about a two inch wide gusset um, in the end, which I don't like to carry a lot of stuff, so it kind of, you know, kind of helps do that. I always like to oversize my zipper a little bit, uh, so this, you know, I'm coming well past where my ends actually are so that I can sew it. And then if I want to trim it off, then I can, but it is not too short in the beginning because that's, that's what you don't want. So we've got this here. Um, where did I put my tabs? Oh, you're painting them, which is why he needed to do that. So we're, let's see here. I can go ahead and cut the slots though. We are using a three quarter inch hardware. Since I do have a two inch wide gusset, I figured a three quarter inch ring would look quite nice. It'll won't be too bulky and it should fit right inside that gusset quite well. Um, so we've got three quarter inch. These are our flat cast D rings right here. They are 020-304-101 for the that. And then um, for the strap, we will also be using a three quarter inch swivel snap. And that is 020-800-818. So that's what we got there. And then I have, we have this gray zipper tape that is kind of a special purchase. We got just a little bulk amount of this gray color zipper tape. And then I'm using the white zipper pulls in the narrow. Um, and then I'm going to be using probably some of this white leather to make some, some leather pulls that I'll do bleeder knots on. And that'll just kind of blend everything together and kind of make it flow. But I think it'll look nice. This leather's a little on the creamy side, so it's a little bit different, but I feel, I feel good about it. Let's see here. Nothing worse than having a zipper break. Yeah, that's no, you don't want, you don't want to run out of space. Um, and I am housing everything between my two layers so that when you look in the bag, there's not going to be any excess anything. So the zipper will all be hidden with this. This is, we're going to lay that out there. So the whole zipper will be hidden in the back. Um, and then once I get those strap tabs, you can hair dry them if you want. Thank you. That we have painted. Um, they will also be hidden between the two layers. Nothing like watching paint dry, guys. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, this is one of Denny's things. 
No, it's not. It's Marvin's. Oh, Marvin's saying. Yeah. <laughs> I've got one of these at home. Can create different widths <clears throat> in different depths for different straps for either edge painting or uh, edge burnishing uh, for a belt that holds it in place and gives it some structure if it's deep enough. Um, or if you're doing a lot of wallet parts that you need edge painted, you can just stack them up here and not worry about them falling or hitting the table and getting it on the face of your leathers, which is always good. And when Marvin came this last time, he brought his little contraption. This is almost a little too shallow or a little too deep yeah. for these straps because they're three quarter inch strips. Um, it's meant a little bit more for, for edging belts, but... I mean, you can't really get, like, as opposed to holding that by hand and trying to edge paint it, it is really nice to have that stability of that little channel. How are we doing? Um, Thomas, I'm not really sure. I have never tried stapling gusset edges. Are you mean just like when I assemble the bag, should I just staple it together? I mean, I, I guess you could. But that that seems a little um, crude. Yeah. I don't. What exactly are you referring to by stapling the edges of the gusset? I'm not. I'm not sure. If, if you don't see it, you could. But I mean, if you're using glue or uh, binder clips. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 I mean, staples leather doesn't like to have holes put in it unless you mean for them to be there. So I wouldn't recommend um, stapling. I've seen somebody use little tack nails in their in their uh, stitch line huh. instead of glue. And you just pull them out as you sew. Oh, okay, so almost like a pin when you're doing fabric construction. Yeah. A little semi more permanent. Yeah. Because you would set it, you would just lightly tap it on your granite so it would just slightly create a little L shape so it doesn't pull out super easy. Like when you glue before sewing and trimming. So like you would just provide enough edge that you would be cutting off the section that you put the staples in. I don't know. I've never tried it. Um, you can try it and let us know. This will work. Silver pen? No, because that's hard to see. And I'm gonna. This is my slot for my for my tab, anyways. Um, let's see here. Okay, so I did my whole gusset is 32 and a half. I'm sorry, 31 and a half inches long. So my gusset, my bag circumference, all the way around my 10 inch circle is 31 and a half inches. Um, and so I did a 12 inch zipper, which will come slightly above center because I wanted my tabs to be hanging at center so that the bag hangs correctly. Um, so if I've got the 12 inches and it's 31, that means if I put it around 15, so seven and seven would be 14. You want them directly off the sides hanging up or do you want them further up? No, I think off the sides, but I could do, we could go a little bit higher than center. So 15 and a half would be about centered on either side if I've got 31 inches. Yeah. And so if we just do if we just do seven, that'll be slightly above center. And that should give you enough clearance. See well, we're kind of just we're kind of just winging this today here guys. Well, they'll also hang out. So once you have tension they'll be not round with the bag. Oh, yeah so maybe we'll just do we'll do seven and a quarter inches. So we'll come a little bit farther down. So I'm gonna cut my slots at seven and a quarter for the strap hangers. And that's seven and a quarter inches from center, unless anybody was confused by what that was. Continue <laughs> painting.
color of the edge paint are we using? Whoa, uh, that was really zoomed in. <laughs> we're using. Get Jen in how long you're staying? <laughs> we're using aluminum. Aluminum. Oh, and then on these tabs, we cut one end square, and then one end has an English tip on it, so that when we fold it over on the inside, we're pretty much guaranteed to hit that tip, no matter if it's a little bit off kilter, so that we at least know that we'll be getting a good, um, a good stitch there that will secure our tabs on well. Did you answer Terry's question? I don't know, did I? Uh, he's just asking if you're going to stitch so the zipper onto the gusset. Nope, I'm just going to leave it like that, just taped in. Yep. No, we will be sewing this. <laughs> I just, so it's a bit of a um, an assembly struggle. So we have to get, so there's our tabs. Uh, we have to get the tabs sewn down first, and then we can line everything, and then we can sew the zipper in once we get the lining on, because we definitely want to catch the lining below the zipper. So we have to get these tabs on first. I'll tell you what, half of leather crafting is simply um, like thinking through your assembly method. Thinking 10 steps ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Just making sure that you don't you don't miss steps that you need to get so that the bag looks the way that you would like it to. And then I'm going to make sure that that comes up a little bit above my slot just because I don't want to look at my slot back there. That seems good. Glue this down. We are using Aqualum today. Good old Rhenia Aqualum. Mostly because it tends to stick to finished sides of leather quite well. That's a lot. Thanks. You get all your edge painting done, Andy? I'm just letting it dry. I got the important pieces. The strap is the last thing. So. Yeah. Probably not going to get there today. We'll wait for that to dry, and then we'll stick it down, and then we'll put the back on. Let's see, what do we got? I start with a half inch seam allowance, then glue, and eventually trim a quarter of an inch. Definitely work on that. I tend to work more on like the cut it exact and line everything up exact kind of method, but definitely I don't do a lot of like upholstery leather projects. Most of my stuff is veg tan. Um, and so I, I will leave, you know, enough so that I can sand everything even, but cutting through like a half inch thick, like welt edge on a knife sheath is, is pretty terrible. It, if you know something might move, leaving extra is not a bad thing. Yeah. Because some, some corners under a machine, they like to, to slide off of each other, even if they're stuck together well. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Still coming back from vacation. Really, less is more with this aqualum. I forgot about contacts a bit. Connie, no, this is not hair on. Uh, this is just uh, one of our embossed leathers, the willow pattern um, that I've cut here. And then this is some of our double sided uh, designer bag leather. Oh, perfect. So there should be links in the description to both of these leathers. Are you going to stitch so it's here? Ooh, 
Brain. It's getting there. It's probably the blow dryer, Dean. We're not talking anyway, so you're fine. Should be good enough. How much did you have sticking out? Mm. The right amount. <laughs> well, you've stuck that one. Where's your vibes? Well, look who it is. Who it is? It's you. Oh, <laughs> well, I knew that. <laughs> So are you, uh, what are you guys doing? We're making a, a rope purse, a rope bag purse. So are you like live? We are. There's people talking and everything. Really? You're not boring them to death? I'm, tr I'm trying not to, but um, I'm not as quippy when I actually have to work. Hmm. <laughs> You're not as what? Quippy? Quippy. That's, that's my word. Yours is snurfles. Mine is no, quippy. No, that's not snurfles. Well, that's looking kind of okay. I think so. Hmm. I, th I think it's going to be pretty nifty. And you're going to put a rope in that? Well, no. This is just like a rope style purse because it's round <gasps> with a gusset. We still have to glue the back side. Yep. Oh. Yep. Well, I will say that's a pretty cool looking front you got there. Right? That, that's Isn't that fun? Pretty neat. And uh, I see your Using your high tech glue spreader there. I am. I'm using my that spatula. That wasn't you. I was talking about. <laughs> oh, Anderson over here. Yep. He's using his. He's the most high tech. I don't know if you knew that. It's water soluble. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's just like your easy glow. Hmm. Well, that's pretty nice. Dean says hi. Hello to whoever. And Elizabeth says hi. And Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Dean. Hello. Hello, Everybody. world. Well, I'd like to stay. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> I just lied, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you did. Wow. <laughs> that came easy. Okay. You can stick that. Let me see if I can't rephrase it. Okay. I sort of kind of wish I could stay. How's that? I, that That's perfect. Okay. I'll accept that. But I got to go and do some real work. Yeah, this is just yeah. fake work. Yeah. It really is. I'm not. I'm not kidding myself here. By all, and I hope you can continue to put up with these fine folks. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be very entertaining and somewhat constructive. We're pretty good. All right, sew them down, sir. So we use our Renia Aqualum. This is a really great glue. It is water-based. The smell is not nearly as intense as the Masters and the Barge um, contact cements. Um, so, you know, if you're ever interested, you know, once you run out of one of those solvent-based, if you want to try a water-based we do highly recommend this one. Um, we've glued down rocks with it, which, you know, a lot of times your contact cements, they're, they don't love non-porous surfaces. They won't adhere to them. They'll just kind of peel away and they won't provide a very secure hold. Um, but this does. So it's good stuff. This here depends on your everyday purse carry set. Yeah, we got Nick in the house. Nick and Chad, who I believe Chad is um, going to entertain us on the after party with some leather crafting. Is that right, Chad? Uh, that's, the plan. that's the plan. So everybody tune in on Twitch after you're done with me for him. I will be here gathering orders for all of you live sales shoppers from yesterday. Almost all of you have completed your orders, which is awesome. Here, go back to camp. Bye, Ron. Have a good one. Ladigo, I will let Kevin know. I will tell him thank you for you. I am very sorry that I missed that week. I still need to go back and check out those videos. Um, one of these days it'll be rolling. Here, I'll put this down. Well, I can't see that at all. Everybody's 
comment in on how quiet it is today. <laughs> Oh, uh, little fear. The gusset is, well, it's oversized right now, but the circumference of the bag is 31 and a half inches. And for any of you that don't have it, you should all get a cloth measuring tape because these things come in really handy when you're trying to do um, gussets. So you'll just, this one's actually easier to do because it's a thicker piece. So you'll just wrap it around. Or, I mean, you can always map the circumference, you know, because it is math. I think it's pi... I don't know, actually. Something. It's been a long time since I was in school, guys. Pi. Just a few years. Actually, is it? Is it just the diameter times pi? Or is it the radius? Guys, I need Google. Pi times the radius squared? Maybe. That might be right. It is 31 and a half inches with your with your ruler. And so what we did is we oversized these. We are going to do a French seam on the outside, but then we will overlap the lining. So we made it a little bit more complicated on ourselves, but I do, um, I think it'll just look nicer. And I really hate the idea of having a seam in the center of a bag that's a circle, uh, because I feel like it could catch on things, or if it tears, um, or you might, it just might get really dirty and, and dungy down in the middle of a purse. Christine, pi r squared. Christine said diameter times pi. Well, I mean that, because pi is 3.14, so 3.1 yada yada yada, and my diameter is 10 inches, so 31, and that would be, that would be exactly, so that's a... <laughs> It's a good way to do that. Look at that. Pi is our square, right? <laughs> this is a circle pie. I suppose you can make a cobbler pie, and those would be, um, you can make those a square. Although I am going to say, if you make a square pie, there's something wrong with you. Pies are supposed to be circles. I mean, pizza is pi, right? That's right, and it's a circle. Some of them are square. That is true. My favorite pizza is Jet's Pizza, which is like the deep dish, and it is a square. So you win, Andy. Pizza is always right. I thought chicken fingers were always right. Well, those two. <laughs> Dean, it, it's our Anderson always eats chicken fingers for every meal. <laughs> Not every meal, just most meals. Yeah, it's it's either you know chicken or pizza or some type of pasta. You're real healthy, aren't you? The best. So, do you like pie? Mm, I like pumpkin pie. I love pie. It, it's a texture thing for me. You're a weird person, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> We're all weird. <laughs> Ooh. My birthday's tomorrow. How old are you going to be? I don't know. We should have a guess. <laughs> hey, none come here, Nick. Because none of them know me, so <laughs> it might be. Everybody, a, come meet Nick. A few, but you, you kind of. We throw us. leather at him on a regular. So this, he's going to be a year older than what he is now, this weekend. So how old is, is this guy right here? You guys guess. So we'll yeah, tell you when you're right. Experiment. I shaved my face last night, so it took off five years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see what they say. More bluing. Take a good guess. 40. Good Lord. What the heck, man? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're done with the game. <laughs> uh, you're so distinguished. <laughs> well, apparently not. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, music girls that hide me. I wonder if Paul is your drummer. Oh, uh, no. Oh, boy. I'm going to have a rat hole. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you're good. So here's if you want to glue from there to there. 
on and the, then on the inside of the line. Yeah, on the inside of the line would be great. <laughs> Look at those beautiful tabs. Perfect. Yeah, they're all right. Well, this one was a little bit shorter, but you know what? That's fine. It's it's okay. It's all it's all in there. Everything is sewn down. Yep. It's, Perfect. As Clayton would say, asymmetrical. It, but it's going to be hidden, which is why we did that. <laughs> I mean, it did stretch a little when I uh, skyped it, so. Yeah. Alrighty. As long as I Ooh, can. So we got a, tw- a 42. 28 because I'm wearing yellow. <laughs> 34, 31. We've got down 20, 22. That's good. We've got, we've got a. Oh, we, we do have a winner. Don't we? Uh, well, no. We don't? Well, uh, on yeah. Twitch? Oh, on Twitch. I'm looking at Twitch. Yeah. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have a All winner right. on Twitch. Tangled up leather. I'll be 32 tomorrow. It's going to be as old as me. And as old as me. <laughs> Apparently, 1990 yeah. was the year to be born if you work yeah. at Springfield Leather. Yep. It was the best a lot about the 90s. It was a good time. It was a good time. Music was a lot better, too. Amen. <laughs> okay, so I marked on my zipper where the where the lining needs to go so that I don't glue there. And we're going to glue up the gusset. What's everybody doing this weekend? I'm still recovering from my trip, so oh, I don't plan on doing much. I just glued my zipper closed, guys. <laughs> I will be doing leather work with my mom. Oh, that's fun. Trying to get ready for Silver Dollar City. Mm, fall season? Yep. Fall season is coming. How many people travel down this way to go to Silver Dollar Silver? I can't say that. I have never been able to say the name of that place. Seashells, seashells by the seashore. Thanks. Silver Dollar City. I have to really concentrate on it. Anybody ever? What have you done so far to be 32? Uh, just 32 revolutions around the sun. How much time do you have? <laughs> Nick, you want to come tell us about your life? You want to tell us all not all really. the mini... Oh, not really. <laughs> you want to be on the sewing machine? Or... Uh, yeah. If you're going to be on I'll, it, I'll, I'll, I'll show a trick. Ooh. I don't know if some people know. Some people probably do. There you go. All right. Well, it's hard to see. Here, I got it. So, if any of you have this roller edge guide, which everybody should if they bought a 26 from us because they all come with one, there's a little adjustment screw flush with the bottom. That's hard to see here. But uh, there, there's an adjustment screw to where you can raise your roller just enough so you can slide your main piece of leather under and still use it as a roller edge guide. Hmm. Andy's tip of the day. I didn't 
mind geometry. Geometry was kind of fun. That's actually when I just... Like, that's, that's when you called it? Um, algebra, like, one or whatever. I've just done it. Yeah, all those formulas, like, when you start getting into algebra and trig, that gets quite tedious if you don't have the right kind of mindset for those kind of things. My math teachers didn't like me because I did all my math in my head and I didn't show my work. Yeah, oh yeah, showing my work was not good either. <laughs> Just ask Google. That is true. You can really ask Google almost anything anymore. It's it's pretty handy. The only thing I don't like about this spatula is I'm constantly like throwing glue at myself. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me wish I had a leather working apron. <laughs> you can switch back to the table. Oh, I did. <laughs> Don't you worry, I Andy. Sewing machines and everything. <laughs> yeah, Nick, I, I won't be able to read a lot of the questions, so when they do come in, if you would like to read them to me, because otherwise I'm just going to be reading the screen and not working, and we're never, ever going to get done with this. <laughs> old man Nick. No, I've made some people feel old. <laughs> Apparently. Listen, I'm finally at a point in my life where I'm not the youngest person all the time, and I'm I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> Cause for for a long time it's just I was just always the youngest. I was the youngest kid in my family. The youngest in all my friends' groups because I hung out with my siblings' friends, so I was just always the youngest. Well, I went to lunch with Spencer the other day and a few other guys, and... That can make we, you feel old. We were talking about uh, Hunter Education, mm -hmm. and I got my card out, and it was two years younger than he is. <laughs> yeah, Spencer's a baby, but we love him because he's also a grandpa. And everyone in here has decided that if they were to get stuck on an island someday, Spencer is the person that they wouldn't mind having with them on said island. Or me. I just don't tell people. But you also don't have the witty banter. No. <laughs> Would you? Did you answer uh, Renee Love's question earlier about glue? I don't know. Did I? I? Um, do you think water-based glue is okay for something that might be wet? I mean, it kind of depends on how wet you think that's going to get. After the glue dries, it really should be fine. Um, and for most things, if you're using glue, it's mostly just to stick something together temporarily. While you sew it. Yeah. Uh, Wayne McManus, what weight are you working? Actually, I, I have a leather gauge right here. I don't know what the weight of the... I'm guessing four or five. Four and a half. Okay. So that's the weight of the white and navy leather. And then somehow one and a half on this uh, embossed. Yeah, it's pretty thin. One and a half to two, probably. People think you have great banter, and so keep it up. <laughs> Specifically in... Ryan Hunt. No, I try. Oh, not. Ryan Hunt. Ryan Hunt. I try, I try. Like, like from R and D, Ryan Hunt. Yeah. Hi, Ryan. Ryan, I thought you had a video to do. He's probably already done. He didn't have to fill up an hour. Okay, I think that's as far as I'm going to glue because once again, we will be finishing the end of this after. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right. Meant to be high. <laughs> Josh is just here to stay hot. Um, I will tell you that 
for the lining of the gusset, I split this leather that is four and a half ounce. I split the back off to make the lining, and it is now exactly two ounces for the lining. So if you did, uh, if you're doing something like this, the lining is not the full weight of the regular leather. leather. All right. That's dry enough. If it's not white, you're good. All right. Mm, this is gonna be sketchy. So, Here. You do this. And then you work that way. Uh, or you can take a piece of paper because. Because it won't stick to the paper. There we go. As long as we catch our edges. As long as we catch our edges, and by we, I mean you. This is going to be lumpy. Yep. Thanks, Nick. All right. Get this down. Perfect. All righty. There you go. All right. Get that stitch around the zipper. Very nice. That is kind of a dark camera over there, Nick. Can you hand me a couple big binder clips? Mm -hmm. I don't have that umbrella over here. I didn't take it out. You will see the inside every time you carry the bag and you put your stuff in it. So why not make it as good as you can? I do love this willow leather. Ooh. Thank you. Terry, all theme parks steal your dollars. Every single one of them. <laughs> now that I've been to more than just Silver Dollar City, because that, that we didn't go anywhere when I was a child growing up. I only went to Silver City with school maybe like twice. But now that I've been to Disney World and Disneyland and Universal, they are all just money sinks because you're stuck there and they will take all of your money while providing you with excellent customer service and smiles. <laughs> what is the printed material? Uh, David, this print is our Willow... Um, floral embossed leathers. There should be a link to it in the description. We carry it in three different colors. Um, this is the steel color, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, but the, the link to the leather should be in the description. Do you use the same steps with water-based glue as you do with contact cement? Uh, yes, Wayne, because it is still contact cement. So it's functions the same way as your adhesive based contact cements. You put it on both sides, you wait till it gets tacky and you put it together. So it functions the same way. Um, you just don't have that really heavy smell. Um, and it could be harder to thin. Like it is a water-based cement, but you just don't want to pour it full of water like you would with like your thinning agent for your glues. Um, so it may, depending on your glue usage, 
you you might discover maybe a little bit more waste with the aqualum because as it like as the water evaporates the glue will get gunkier and you can try to add a little bit of water to it um but we don't suggest that you just pour it full of water no description says dean bye josh Dean Nick says that he can see him, and I'm going to trust him. But it is. If you just go to springfieldleather.com, you can type in Willow, and you should pull up this leather. Um, but I, depending on what you're looking at, you might have to refresh your page when it's done or something for that description to show up for you. Willow embossed shower paper. That one was put into the description. Were you talking about the, the name? No, he was talking about the printed one. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well, Andrea, sounds like an adventure that you had this morning. <laughs> Can you use the barge or Angela centers on the masters? No, uh, Latigo, we do not recommend that you use other thinners, but like we don't recommend that you mix thinners and cement. If you have masters contact cement, use master center. They are designed to go together and we can't guarantee what you're going to get if you put a different thinner in it. Um, so I, if you wanted to like pour some out and try it, outside of your main container. You can see what happens, but that's not something that we typically recommend. You got it? Yep. It's pretty close. Um, is it tooling based? No, nah, this is, it's a water base. Ah. Uh, I don't actually have the bottle here, so I can't see if it says that it's tooling free or not. I know some of like the barge cements that we do spell, sell a specific tooling free one. Um, I have not looked that up on the Aqualum. I'm not really sure what the tooling is for the adhe or the solvent based ones versus the water based. All righty, look at that. We've got a gusset, so we will get this. Should we trim it now or should we trim it later? We can trim it after. Okay. Less of a chance right off the edge. Yeah. So we will trim it afterwards, but we will. So what's next is we are going to French seam this together. So I've got my line where my 32 and a half in 31, 31 and a half inches is right there. So we're going to line this up and we'll draw a line and he's going to sew that face to face like this. So let's see, mark it on the back. One seven eight. Elizabeth asks, do your binder clips have a slip between the holes, or did you just pin two holes and remove the wire to attach it? Remove the wire. So... I was bored on one of my breaks one day, and uh, <laughs> one thing leads to another. So I ended up making a laser pattern. That's all it is. Okay, it looks like you should just be able to line these up and just sew on that line. There you go. Just the ends should the ends look like they line up just fine. Yeah, these little contraptions are nifty. <laughs> Do 
if if you ever made your own, some woodworkers might be out there. If you made this a little bit shorter, the overall length, this wouldn't touch, and you could almost use it for edge banding something. So it works like a, a rubber band almost as you're putting clamp pressure on the side of something. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So let's say this is a board. Okay. And you wanted to cover that board with something. Let's say if you had a little piece and you put glue on it. Like a veneer? Yeah. Okay. It would help keep pressure on that. Hmm. Huh. Alrighty. Sweet. <laughs> what did he need binder clips for? Who? Elizabeth Law said that she bought some last weekend to make some leather clips, but her husband stole them. The question is what he doesn't need them for. Oh, look, it's almost been an hour. Yeah. We're probably going to get this gusset assembled and then call it a day, and then we'll assemble the bag on Wednesday. Anderson did an awesome job sewing this pocket on. I really... For those of you that do pockets, doing that stitch over the top so that it doesn't pull away from the bag right there is really a nice touch. Just sweet. Alrighty. <laughs> this should go around. Look at that. Just get the leather stretcher out. Yeah. Honestly, circles are pretty forgiving, so that should work just fine. So now that we have this, we are going to fold this backwards, glue, and then we'll trim it down so that it's not so bulky. And then, oh, let's see here. Actually, why don't you just go ahead and we will just roll that edge. Roll one of them? Yep, yeah, just fold that and just sew that up. We're just going to roll one of the inside edges so that it's finished so we don't just have a raw edge coming up one of the sides. And then we're going to glue one side under. We're going to glue that rolled side over the top of it so then we don't have a seam at the bottom and we have a nice rolled edge here. Reptile enclosures. Well, that's fun. Does he sell reptiles or does he just collect them in your house? Either way is fine. I'm just curious. And what kind of reptiles? Like, do you have chameleons? Or a Komodo dragon? Which you probably shouldn't have because it will eat you, but they could be fun. Um, probably. She said she's going to start something with a twist today. You'll have to send us pictures tangled up. What was I? I th I'm pretty sure that I know your name, but I, I got nothing. <laughs> Tony probably does. He's selling as the idea, but we have a few pets too. Nice. That'll be fun. I really like reptiles, but I've never owned any. We had some hamsters for a while, but we have like five dogs, and I just, I don't think that I could handle more critters that I have to take care of. Yeah, you could feed it's hamsters too much. to reptiles. I could, but they've all died at this point, so I don't, I don't have any left. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Leave ourselves like a quarter of an inch here to make that turn. I'll roll that back just and I actually might because I'm sewing this as an outside seam I'm actually going to clip where my scissors go I'm gonna clip these corners off 
so that they don't show up in the seam and it'll be just less bulky. And since I'm gluing it down to the lining, it really should be fine. I guess we're going to find out though. Yes, Nick. Just like you guys will find out. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? There's there's a chameleon that's named after, is it like a leopard chameleon or something like that? He looks really cool. I think maybe one day when I don't have so many dogs. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I'll just live a life free of animals, which could also be fun. I'll be able to find blend in everything. Oh, you always got to have one dog. I know. That's what Chris is probably like. We'll always have two, I think is what he said. But I would really maybe just like one. Like, just a Luna. Okay. Not that I don't love my other dogs. But she she loves us enough that I don't feel like she needs another friend. Like, our other dogs, I got her because I was like, Miko needs a friend. But we're her friend. So I feel like it's pretty good. Keep gluing because we're going to glue the whole thing, anyways. How's that strap painting going? It'll have to take a couple coats. Any other fun comments? Um, Kips. Twitch. Apparently, all the streaming services are having glitches today. Twitch has been really bad here lately. Uh, well, lots of buffering. Andrea, that's me, is excited about having some para raccoon in her box from the live or something. Oh, yeah, from the, the Western boxes a couple weeks ago. The para is really neat. It's Depending on the piece that you get, sometimes I feel like it could be a little bit challenging if it's the thicker piece. Um, but it just looks so cool. It is pretty great. I know you guys join us just to watch us glue things. That's everybody's favorite part. That's probably good enough for me. And he's working on a pretty cool bag. He's got a satchel style backpack that he's been working on that has a like a rounded bottom where the back panel is both the bottom and the flap that comes around. So it's got kind of a cool look to it. And just go grab it. He could just go grab it. Well, that's true. Armstrong on Facebook is going to Waco next week. Just <gasps> stop by the store on the way back. Oh, Molly! You'll have to give us a haul or shoot live at springfieldleather.com and email, and Tony and I will make sure that we are available and here. That's exciting. I hope you have a great time. Is that the, the iFogel show? Is that what you're doing? My rolled edge. Oh, guys, look at this. Here, I'll give you. I'll give you the space. You can show everybody your bag. Yeah. So this will be a new pattern, correct? Yes. So this is in production. So please don't ask us about it for maybe a month or two. Um. If you didn't ask me, I think it's uh, Sahara. Yeah, it's our new Sahara line uh, that we released what, like a couple months ago, Chad. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Radio. 
So that is the the blue and the whatever colors. There might be a few changes on it still, but this is the the first prototype, so. Looks great. The Sahara Pebble. I think it just it has so much character to it. I really love the way that it looks. I think we've got five or six different colors. We've got a lot of different colors. Yeah, Brian said, um, yes. Oasis in Amber. Oasis in Amber. Chad, some light. Stick it down no, I don't want to stick it down yet. Oh, well, I'll stick it down in a second. <laughs> oh, you want me to stitch over that? Then we're gonna fold that one. No, there's no. I'm not gonna have you stitch. I'm just gonna. It'll be fine. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna be glued oh, down. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So okay. no, no stitches. It'll just be that seam. My beautiful. Started using like a black pin on this project, which then I realized I probably shouldn't have. Yeah. It'll be fine. Where can it go from here? Where can what go, Dean? going to be fun to trim this circle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Perfect. Put some more glue. All the glue. I'm sure you guys are loving all the glue. So do we have any sandpaper? Oh, it'll be fine. I actually should have laid that piece down beforehand because I don't know how far to glue. Safe. Is there like duty free music? I think there is. But <laughs> I have like duty free in my head. I spent so much time in airports for the last week. Yeah, and then, oh, on the cruise, too, like, all the alcohol is, like, duty-free, yada, tax-free, yada, yada. But then they don't let you have it on the cruise. Like, they keep it until you get off the boat because they want you to drink their expensive alcohol, which is dumb. Probably like hearing all the, the room noises and stuff, though. <laughs> all the room noises, all of our lovely mouth breathing. Um, it was, so... <laughs> so I do have a funny story while I finish gluing. So we had some delays because we flew out, uh, well, we attempted to fly out Saturday morning out of Kansas City, and our flight was at 5.30 in the morning, um, so we drove up to Kansas City the night before so that we could try to get a little bit of sleep in before getting to the airport at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning, because everybody's like, you, you know, you got to have your two hours, and I haven't really flown out of Kansas City very frequently. In fact, it ha it's been years since I've I've gone out of Kansas City, and I kind of expected a lot more than what we got, which was like a hallway with, um, like a divided hallway with your terminals, like your gates, just on one side and the entrance to the airport on the other side. It was very strange. It was very strange. So anyway, so we get to the airport at 3 o'clock in the morning, and everything seems fine. We get on our plane. And then suddenly the captain makes an announcement that there is weather coming into Chicago, which is where we were flying to, um, and we couldn't leave for like another 30 minutes. And he's like, so we're just, he's like, we're just going to hang out here, you know, we're just going to keep the lights down, because once again, it's 5 o'clock in the morning, and as soon as they give us the okay, we will head out. So we sit on a stuffy airplane for 45 minutes. And then he gets back on and says the storm that came through flooded the airport and everything is grounded for right now. So then we got to get off of our lovely plane 
and um, sit in the airport for another like two hours, two and a half hours until Chicago could get their airport cleaned up enough that we could leave Kansas City to fly to Chicago. So that was a lot of fun. First thing in the morning, that was that was super great. And then when we got into Chicago, of course, the delay that started the morning just has this wonderful trickle down effect. Yes, Nick. Okay, you're just like anxiously standing on things. Anyways, and so um, yeah, so then we get to Chicago, and then we sit there for about four extra hours um, as they kept moving our gate you know, time and time and time again. Um, and finally we did get to leave and we did finally get to Vancouver and that was lovely. And then we're in our hotel in Vancouver and my lovely husband really likes to jump on elevators. It's like his favorite thing to do because he's a large child. And, um, you know what? I've been warning him for years that that's, it's not a great idea. Like, it's probably just not something that we should do on a frequent basis. He broke the elevator. He sure did. We were stuck in an elevator in Vancouver for an hour um, until we finally, like, they had called the elevator company. Um, but Andrew, whom we were with, and you guys know, you guys know Andrew, he doesn't like elevators and he doesn't care for small spaces. And, you know, there wasn't a lot of air coming through the elevator. And so, you know, they're both semi-large men, my husband and Andrew. And they were both nice and sweaty and hot. And Andrew's having a bit of a freak out because he doesn't really like small spaces. Um, so he finally calls the fire department in Canada. <laughs> and, you know, because it was taking too long to get the elevator company. It was a Sunday. Like, it was a Sunday. So... You know, I don't really know how elevator companies work or what their frequency of need to go rescue people is. But anyway, so we had two lovely fire uh, department officers come and rescue us from a Toronto <laughs> hotel elevator that my husband broke because he's a baby and he jumps in elevators. That's my story. You shouldn't, you just shouldn't jump. You should just, he's 35 years old, guys, and he's jumping on elevators. <laughs> My biggest fear is jumping in elevator. <laughs> is it? I don't want them. I would second to my drowning, but hopefully none of them happen. I know how to get into elevators, so I know how they work. It was fun. They had a they had a neat little claw that they that they pulled the door open with. Alrighty, there is our gusset. So now, guys, that was my story. It was really great. We have a gusset. We have a front flap of our bag that has a pocket on the inside. So when we put this together, we really have to make sure that this pocket lines up uh, vertically with this, which since it's a circle is more difficult than you think. Um, and then we've got our back pocket, which our panel, which now also has a pocket. So then we have to make sure that that also lines up well. So we will keep going on Wednesday and we'll see how far we get with our cute little rope bag purse that we're making. Isn't this fun, guys? I'm pretty excited about this. This, oh, yeah, that's right, this way. So that is the first steps. Oops, there you go. See, already a mess. Anyways, so that's where we're at. We are going to call it for today and we'll be back on Wednesday with putting the gusset in. We'll probably go ahead and already trim this just so if we mess up, we can make another one before then. Um, and we'll put that together and then we'll work on the strap. So hope everybody, let's hear, did you eat fresh seafood? Yes, Dean. We ate lots of seafood. It was wonderful. Um, it was a good time. Anything else? Where's the pattern made for this? Uh, guys, this is a 10 inch circle. This is a 10 inch circle. If you need this right here, you can go to the pillow, uh, videos from a few weeks ago and you can get the two saint twist pillow um print off sheets to where you you'll get this array situation but these are 10 inch circles so there's no pattern for this it's just a 10 inch circle and then a two and a half inch gusset those are really the only things that you need to know otherwise make it as amazing as you want. And then also like I've kind of, as we went through this, I've said all of the specifics of the different things, but um, I might write it down so that we can put it in the description as well. All of the little different components that we've used, but tenant circle, you guys are crafty. You take it from there.
just about snowing in sunny Saskatchewan. Oh, that sounds nice, Thomas. My husband would prefer to be there than here because it's definitely not snowing here. We got off that plane from, you know, we leave Toronto and we get to Denver, which is still pretty, you know, not very humid in Denver. It's so high. It's it's pretty nice. And then we get into Kansas City um, on Tuesday morning at like one o'clock in the morning. And that humidity is just like, welcome home. This is a big punch in the face with some just some yeah. wonderful Missouri humidity. So in any case. We'll see you guys later. Everybody have a great weekend, and we will be back. Bye, guys. Bye. There's some words.